This is a demonstration of measuring what is referred to as stud circle runout. The studs we're referring to are these wheel studs, and everyone assumes that these studs, of which there are five here on this axle uh, flange, they assume that these studs are equal centered, or equal distance from the center of this axle shaft out to the hole that they were uh, drilled the hole drilled in the axle uh, flange here where you, you pull the stud through. But as it turns out, these are not on a perfect uh, center line with the center line of the uh, axle uh, shaft. And the difference between the, the holes, the distance between the holes in the center of the axle shaft is called stud circle runout. So wheel stud. And what does that have to do with anything? Well, if you have wheel stud circle run out, instead of these studs just rotating nicely as you drive down the road, they'll be kind of orbiting up and down, kind of like an egg uh, rolling down the road. Um, and it can cause your tire and wheel assembly to be moving up and down as you drive down the road also, which can cause a first order tire speed uh, related vibration. So for vibration diagnosis, this is a check that you would do if your tire and wheel assembly runout was excessive on the vehicle, but not off of the vehicle. So um, see my other YouTube video on uh, checking uh, tire and wheel assembly runout on the vehicle. Um, but if, if it has excessive runout while it's bolted up to these wheel studs, but then you center it on a wheel balancing machine and check the run out there and the run out is acceptable then the problem must be either in the wheel studs or in this circular uh, center part of the axle uh, flange here where the wheels are supposed to be centered now all factory wheels are hub centered which means this center ring here is what um, the wheels are centered onto and the wheel studs just simply clamp it down to this uh, axle uh, flange but on a lot of aftermarket wheels uh, to be universal they don't s use this hub to center the wheels instead they use the wheel studs to center the wheel well if there's wheel stud run out and that's how you're centering the wheel then the wheel of course is going to be um, moving uh, up and down as you drive down the road so I'm going to demonstrate here how to measure wheel stud runout and uh, go from there. Okay, so I've got a dial indicator uh, set up here as you can see. And I've got the dial indicator plunger with a wide tip. Let me uh, zoom in here so you can see the wide tip. There we go. So this uh, black tip that you see here uh, is a really wide uh, tip. Uh, it's part of a uh, kit, a uh, contact uh, point uh, set that I have uh, purchased from Sterrett, contact point set, set number 25R. And in this kit, it comes with a big selection of uh, tips that will fit on a dial indicator. And uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful set. But this, this tip here is part of this set. And I like this tip or the roller tip. The roller tip would work uh, great also, the Starrett 25W. But um, either of those work great because they will glide back and forth easily over this uh, wheel stud. So what we want to do is find the high spot of every wheel stud here and compare it uh, using the dial indicator to see what is the difference between the highest high spot and the lowest uh, low spot. So the way that we do that is... I've got the plunger set up on the dial or on the with the wheel stud, so I'm just going to rotate the wheel stud or the the axle uh, one way or the other, and I need to find the high spot of the wheel stud. Now, notice 
uh, if you watch this dial indicator as it comes around it'll get to a point where it stops and then it'll change directions but I did not change directions at that point where it stops getting real close whoop I passed it right there where I've got the dial indicator zeroed that's the high spot of this stud and then if I keep going then it goes back the other way so one more time I did not change directions but notice the dial indicator goes towards zero stops turns back around and goes the other way and you need to for consistency sake just because of how the dial indicator uh, is mounted I've got a magnetic base holding this on uh, you need to be rotating the flange and the, with the wheel studs in the same direction when you check each wheel stud so um, right there I'm going to zero it okay so now um, I'm going to roll the axle shaft until it gets to the next uh, wheel stud let it down slowly come over here and we'll pick that back up okay here we go so now we're going to find the high spot of this wheel stud notice it is looks like about three thousandths of an inch different its high spot is three thousandths of an inch different than the previous one so we've got three thousandths uh, stud circle run out so far so let's continue on around to the next wheel stud so you've got to do this on every single stud I've found problems on vehicles that couldn't be fixed the so-called can't be fixed vehicles that were about to be purchased back by doing this very check now, there was a vibration they'd balance the tires and wheels uh, assembly of course and couldn't find uh, any problems but uh, okay there's our high spot right there so about four thousandths of an inch difference between that first stud and this one uh, and it ended up not being the tires and wheels at all it was the the hub assembly that hu the hub and bearing assembly on the front of a Dodge truck that ended up having w uh, excessive uh, stud circle run out okay so let's check this one whoop too far this one's a little closer only about a half thousandth uh, difference and then let's check the last one come back around here by the way you you may be noticing that I'm checking this the stud circle run out deep inside here where the wheel actually uh, sits you don't want to check it out on the end of the stud because that's not where the wheel sits and you will get more run out out on that end of the stud because they're never in a perfectly straight so here we go let's check this last one and it looks like it it's about a th one thousandth of an inch difference so between or by comparison uh, on the five wheel studs we started by zeroing the dial indicator on this stud and then we had three thousandths four thousandths about two and about one and then back to zero here so the holes that were drilled for those wheel studs to go in are contributing about a four thousandths run out to the tire and wheel assembly as you drive down the road and the maximum allowed specification on these uh, typically is around ten thousandths of an inch but every vehicle manufacturer may have their own um, specs so be sure to look it up in the service information but uh, typically ten thousandths is the maximum now you can do what's called match mounting so if this stud was uh, 
zero and this one was four thousandths less that means this was the high high spot this is the low spot if you can find the high and low spot on your tire and wheel assembly uh, you can rotate the wheel assembly on the studs to try to reduce overall tire and wheel assembly runout and that's why um, if you ever uh, take a hubcap off or go to take lug nuts off um, and you see a wheel stud that's got a paint mark on it uh, and a brake rotor drum or whatever that has a paint mark on it and a wheel maybe that has a paint mark on it somebody's gone to the trouble to match mount those and it's a good idea to always put those back where they were because even if you didn't break anything imagine putting it uh, 180 degrees off of match mounting you could actually cause a vibration to occur that was not there before you worked on it and of course every technician hates hearing the customer say ever since you worked on my car it's got this vibration or, or whatever uh, has gone wrong uh, when in fact it, it may you may have caused it um, by undoing the match mounting work that someone else has done so this works it doesn't matter how many wheel studs you have just check the highest check the high spots of each stud compare the highest one to the lowest one anything over ten thousandths of an inch the entire axle shaft or hub and bearing assembly on, on the front or, or rear if it's a front wheel drive uh, would need to be replaced and just a word of warning just because it's new does not mean it is good i mean this was new at one time um, on that dodge truck i was telling you about we we replaced the hub and bearing assembly and the replacement one was worse than the one we took off it ended up taking a third hub and bearing assembly and this is a three-quarter ton uh, four-wheel drive truck the left front hub and bearing assembly um, it took a third one before we got one that had stud circle run out uh, within specifications so this has been a demonstration of measuring stud circle run out for the purpose of reducing first order tire speed related vibrations by match mounting uh, tire and wheel assemblies to the wheel studs.